What's up internet, Pandragon down here, and welcome back to March Disney Villain Madness. This is the second of our two tag team matches, and believe it or not, this one's actually quite special for me, because this team contains my favourite Disney villain of all time, and the first Disney villain to ever scare the crap out of me. Now on Morgan's team, she has Prince John from Robin Hood, and the Horned King from Black Cauldron. Which for the record, I wanted Morgan, you stole him from me! But anyway, I'm not one to hold a grudge. <laughs> You're going down. My team's ready to cut your heart out and bring the hellfire down. Let's bring it on. Hands down, Claude Frollo is my favourite Disney villain of all time, and I personally would go so far to say that he is the greatest Disney villain ever. He just has so many layers of complexity compared to any other villain. The quote-unquote guardian of Quasimodo, Frollo's mission is to exterminate all the gypsies in France, whom he considers unclean and abominations. He keeps Quasimodo locked away in the bell tower of Notre Dame, under the pretense that his parents were murdered by the gypsies. Frollo claims to be a servant of God, a highly religious man that likes to think he's doing God's will. But despite his piety, he is anything but a saint. In fact, his list of crimes will make even Sean Yu tremble. At the start of the film, he murders a gypsy woman, Quasi's mother, and even tries to drown Quasimodo because he thinks he's ugly, before the archdeacon stops him. And later in the film, while trying to kill the gypsies, he lusts over Esmeralda, bullies and emotionally blackmails Quasimodo, and even burns down a house with a family still inside. So essentially, he's a hypocrite, a clotted philandra, xenophobe, and a murderer. By all accounts, I should hate this guy. But what I find most interesting about him is, unlike a lot of Disney villains, he isn't motivated by personal greed or a desire for revenge. He's motivated by his own religion. He sees himself as a devout Christian. Well, zealot would probably be a better word. He believes that he's completely without sin, even when committing the most heinous of acts. One could argue that he's just using religion as an excuse for his deeds. You may think that, as he is a religious man, then anything evil he does will be forgiven. But I'm not convinced. When he kills Quasimodo's mother, he tells the Archdeacon without any remorse, I'm guiltless. As Clopping says, he sees sin everywhere but from within. Even when he lusts over Esmeralda, he doesn't see this as a human feeling, but rather Esmeralda is bewitching him and trying to lure him into sin. A perfect example of how Frollo sees himself is in the song Hellfire, which is, in my opinion, the absolute best Disney song ever written. I know a lot of people say Let It Go is the best Disney song of all time, and nothing personal to any Frozen fans, but I would say that Hellfire isn't just better than Let It Go, it eats it alive. Every time I hear this song, I get chills. Most villain songs are usually done to explain the bad guy's powers or their evil plans. However, this song captures Frollo's lust for Esmeralda, his fear of damnation, and finally his desire that Esmeralda will be his, or he will condemn her to the fires of hell. This is a kid's movie, right? It's certainly much darker than any other Disney song, but it has great visuals and really goes into the mentality of Frollo. Here we see a conflicted man, torn between his human desires and his religious belief, but ultimately it's his belief that rules over everything. No other Disney song, I think, captures the mindset of a villain like this one does. Another reason why I think that Frollo is the best Disney villain of all time is that he was voiced by one of my favourite voice actors, the late Tony Jay, who you may remember I mentioned in my Shere Khan video. Anyone who has an interest in animation in general will know that Tony Jay has done a ton of work, especially with Disney. Everything from Shere Khan in Jungle Book 2 to Anubis in Gargoyles. His deep, powerful voice adds a real demonic sense to Frollo, making him one of the most commanding villains of all. When you add this all together, you have, in my opinion, the most complex, sinister, tortured, and yet utterly evil characters in Disney fiction. Believe it or not, Snow White was both the first Disney movie I ever saw and the first film I ever saw at the cinema, when it was re-released in the 80s that is. 
and the Evil Queen has the distinction of being the first Disney villain to give me nightmares. The Evil Queen could be considered the precursor to Mother Gothel in the sense that her vanity and desire to be beautiful rules over everything. However, the Evil Queen, or Queen Grimhilda in some circles, takes it to a whole new level. She doesn't just want to be beautiful, she'll kill anyone that she thinks is more beautiful than her. Even her own stepdaughter. Jesus, even Lady Tremaine wasn't this twisted. From the very start, you can tell how insanely jealous the Queen is of Snow White when she makes her work in rags. She consults the mirror every day to ask, who is the fairest of them all? And the mirror only says her. Until Snow White comes of age, and then the mirror tells us she is now more beautiful than the Queen. That's when things start to get real. Ordering her huntsman to take Snow White out and kill her, he shows her mercy and lets her escape into the woods. Deciding that if you want a job done right, do it yourself, the Queen goes down to a secret lab to cook up a scheme to finish off Snow White once and for all. Oh dear God. The potion making scene gave me nightmares as a child. It has everything from thunder to screaming spirits. And I was not prepared for that transformation into the witch. It's just something about the way her eyes look that really creeped me out. And from what I read on various blogs, I wasn't the only one to think this. I reckon this one must have given nightmares to every child back in the 30s. So after turning into a witch, she visits Snow White and gives her an apple, which Snow White accepts. Unfortunately, this apple just happens to be poisoned. You know, I just realised something. Most of the story in this film is driven by how dumb Snow White is. A huntsman takes her into a dark forest to pick up flowers and she doesn't bat an eyelid. Then a wizened old crow offers her an apple and she accepts it. Seriously, how stupid is this girl? Anyway, moving on. As in any true Disney fashion, the evil queen gets her comeuppance, Snow White wakes up, blah blah blah, you know the drill by now. But even seeing her fall to her death couldn't get rid of the nightmares that she left me. Now the evil queen is often considered alongside Maleficent as one of the greatest Disney villainesses of all time. But unlike Maleficent, her motivations are clear. She's driven by her own desire to be loved by everyone else. Kind of making her the Disney equivalent of Kim Kardashian. But she takes self-absorption to a whole new level. And God help you if you happen to be more beautiful than her. She'll put a poison apple down your throat or have your heart cut out and left in the box. Just the fact that she's willing to make herself look ugly and get rid of the one thing that she cherishes more than anything just so she can kill Snow White really shows how much she hates her. The Evil Queen was the first Disney villain to scare me, but certainly not the last. In some ways I have to thank the Evil Queen as she's indirectly responsible for helping me see the darker side of Disney films. With her you really have to ask, who is the fairest of them all? Claude Frollo and the Evil Queen bring the darkness of Disney to screaming life. Okay guys, you have the score by now. Click on the link below to vote for your favourites. Voting stays open until the 17th of March. And that's it for our opening matches. All we have to do now is count up the winners and set up the brackets for the tournament. If there's any justice, then my guys would have trounced Morgan's team, but we shall see. Whatever happens, Morgan, I'll see you in the next round. Follow our blogs for more info and come back here on the 17th of March when we'll have the final tournament brackets. Peace out guys, see you later.